guys, if you're a fan of the Sly Guy podcast and you just want more slyness, you want there's hours of extra footage, hours of extra podcasts, like 190 bonus episodes and loads of other stuff over at www.patreon.com forward slash Sly Guy podcast. It's all there. Go check it out. Don't hesitate or else you'll miss out, won't you? That's, that's the worst Patreon read ever. But go and sign up. It's two quid a month. It's worth it. The Sly Guy podcast is always brought to you in association with Modest Beer. You should know it by now. Modest Beer is the best. It's delicious beer. It's d- cool looking. It's great tasting. It's got amazing merch all at their website, www.modestbeer.co.uk. It's all you want in a beer. There's so many different types of beer. There's IPA. There's... Double Napa. There's... Pale Ale. It's all you want. It's delicious and there's more. There's stout. There's other stuff. What am I doing telling you? Go to the website, modestbeer.co.uk. Check out what you want. And if you want to steal something off them, you use the discount code SLYPA15, gives you 15% off the merch, the beers, there's nothing. I recommend, 10 out of 10 would recommend Modest Beer. I'm the Sly Guy. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Sly Guy Podcast. Wherever you're listening to the podcast, welcome. Thank you for your ears, thank you for your eyes if you're watching on YouTube. If you haven't checked out the video podcast, what are you doing? Head on over to YouTube. Find the Sly Guy podcast, subscribe to my channel, get all the podcasts there nice and early. And again, if you want it even earlier than that, we're sticking the video up now on Patreon. So that's every single every single Wednesday you get access to the podcast video, full video podcast there for you on Wednesday. You get an ad-free audio podcast. I mean, that's worth the two pound loan to get early access. And also what people do there is they come and get in touch with me and be like, listen, Dave, you've said something out of order here, so it needs to be cut otherwise. It's all over there patreon.com check it out it's a good time so wherever you are this week I've just been back from Disneyland I'm feeling good it was a good time a nice break and all that being said probably need a break after the break because when you're away with kids never sweet you know never relaxing the kids are great they had a lovely time as a parent exhausted it's taken me about five days to get over the jet lag because there's a one hour time difference between here and Paris but that's still neither here nor there I'm tired but I'm positive and I'm back on the podcast feeling good I got mugged in Paris as well. Not not literally mugged, but mugged off by a princess. Mulan. Of all people. She's still got issues with the Huns years later. Even though I'm half a chaffa, who cares? You hear about that in this episode. Uh, but anyway, where am I this week? Last week, I was in Antrim. Mogi's Funhouse. 10 out of 10 would recommend. This week, I am on this Thursday. I'm in Lavery's Comedy Club. Friday, I'm at the Doyen, which is in... Lisburn Road so if you want to come and see me come there unfortunately Lavery's sold out for you guys too bad too sad but I think there's a couple of tickets left for the doy and it's myself and Tim McGarry's headline I think Karen Franco may be on as well um, but either way it'll be a nice time and this episode of the podcast was a nice time what an episode it was we had frequent collaborator friend and comedian extraordinaire one liner master writer father husband Company director and all around just great guy, Sean Haggerty, was in the pod this week. We we actually laughed at one point until we cried. It was a, it was a stupid episode. You know, it was very silly but very funny. So I hope you guys enjoy it. We covered all the big topics, didn't we? We talked about what it's like being a working parent, which is never fun. It's never straightforward, never easy, but it's rewarding, you know. We spoke about some of the my mug offs in Disney. We spoke about what happened to me with Mulan. We spoke about how my dad nearly got into a fight with an adult with learning difficulties. All covered on this week's enjoyable yet silly episode of the Sly Guy podcast. Sean, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> I thought we were fully 10 minutes in No, there, because no. if we were, it would be the most cancelable episode ever. Just right me outing boys for being perverts, you know, yeah. just straight out. But uh, how are you? How's the form? Good, thanks. Yeah, yeah. We're just having me chat there off. Cameron there, you're going on a bit of a trip. Going on a, in more ways than one, hopefully. Yeah. If you know um, what I mean. 
Uh, yeah, Pun intended. Uh, yeah, yeah and, and where are you going for the, the listeners and uh, the viewers? Going to the dam, Amsterdam. When are you heading there? The last is it March? Going in March, yeah. Is it March I, now? I don't want to say the exact date because people will land over there and be like, mm, yeah. do you know what I mean? True. No, I mean, do there's, those kind? Yeah, there's definitely people be like, oh, I thought, you know, yeah. we don't invite to But if, no? you check, if you check Shane's poster though and see the, the ex- ex- exact dates there, do you know, so <laughs> you can go on like that. a Shane's <laughs> tour yeah. and see. But yeah. is he still doing Amsterdam? Because I know he pulled a few dates. Yeah, yeah, still doing Amsterdam. Nice. Yeah, him and Willie T. Oh, shall so be. it should be good. So loads culturally of over, exciting. Yeah. We're going over for a wee um, a one nighter. It was billed to me as this like sort of cheap city break for one night, uh-huh. but it's 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 anything but. It's cost me near two hundred and fifty quid already. Yeah, you know the thing about it that I would say to you is anything she arranges, look into yourself because mm-hmm. he's stupid and doesn't arrange things properly ever. Right, ever, right. ever, ever. Noted for next time. Yeah. But you know what I would do? I'd try to make a couple of days of it. Well, the flights are booked. It's literally one night. So it's it's scraping 24 hours. Like, maybe not. A-Rise going, is he, Andrew Ryan? He is indeed. We're sharing a room, me and Andrew. I mean, you know what? He's someone I would like to share a room. I mean, yeah. would, would I think so. But then, like, if he gets... Like, if someone tries to, like, for banter, spike him with a wee dodgy brownie and he ends up... Yeah. Going crazy? He could be he, anything. I would imagine he has a spreadsheet of all the drugs. Yeah, he would have some kind of graph or something. Yeah, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, some kind of spider diagram. He has something yeah. in place where he's only going to try specific things. But, but I, I let I, me go on my spreadsheet here quickly. Oh, <laughs> kind of that one. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to do though because I'm, I'm Mister Clean Cut. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, you of all people know that, but I, I don't know. I don't know whether to just try stuff or whether to just come you know home what? and just go. I would say don't try anything Connor Keys gives you or anything Willie T gives you because Connor right. Keys has no. He can live his life while smoking yeah. serious gear. Yeah. You know, straight up heroin and all during the day. Yeah. But And Willie would think it would be funny to, you know, and I think it wouldn't. So, you know, I would right. do. I would just, just find a fella in the street selling stuff out of his pocket. Yeah. They're always the salt of the earth. Okay. There's always quite literally the salt of the earth and whatever we're selling as well. So go to those guys and be like, listen, hook me up. Yeah. But you know what? I I remember, like I I'm probably you got to listen PSNI. Don't don't come after me here. But I think I smoked a little bit of cannabis weed when we were at the Edinburgh Fringe a few years Shit. ago. Right. And then like I've had, had different experiences of weed over the years. I remember once I, when I was underage again PSNI. Sorry, I went to one of my mates brother's 18th birthday. So I must have been about 16 at the time. I'd never touched it before. And his mates were like, right, this is what you do. You take it. And I was like, okay. And what do you just smoke it? And he goes, nah, you have to try to inhale. So as it all goes down, the entire st- no the end. And I was like, what? And he goes, that's the only way you're going to get it. So it's like, so they were all fucking, and I, uh, and I tried to get as much, and I probably took about half of a joint in one puff. And like, as a fat asthmatic, it wasn't a wise idea. So after that, I spent the majority of that party just lying face down in grass, smoking. And they were all like, ah, yeah, look at you. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. And then it came too. That's and Yeah, so shit. But no, <laughs> I came to and went into the house and just fucking wolfed the spread into me. You know? But I've had a few fucking weird experiences on, on like you're talking about not being knowing what's going on because I, I, you'd be the same as me like naive to what it all is because mm. like I, I'm happy enough just getting a buzz off you know 10 minutes peace you know what I mean mm. like just quiet but um, I remember I went to a party once with this guy who like it, it's never like work a job where you were maybe like young and but you work with all age ranges of people, so you could be like whenever I worked in in B and Q, there's people like so like full like management age, like people retiring. I was just in school at the time, or whatever else. There's a guy who was a, probably in his early forties, was having a house party, invited me and my mate to it, and I had been like sixteen, he must have been like seventeen or eighteen at the time. Who is? And yeah, but he was like, it's going to be a pretty pretty cool party. And we were like, yeah, sounds good, <laughs> and. Um, He's like, yeah, I live in this big house in Coltraw. And he lived in this house in Coltraw, which at the time we were like, how the fuck does he work part-time being q in a house in Coltraw? But there's like 40 people renting it. So it was like all these like circus people and all renting this house. Me and him right. were turning up being like, this is like the start of a fucking horror film. Being like, q Hefner, can yeah. you say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you call the episode that yeah being you Hefner, Hefner. <laughs> <laughs> but we get left off the taxi at the bottom of the lane and we're walking up this lane and we're like what's that and you just see like these lights going 
as he got up, there was like these two like fire breathing women, but they were just in these bikinis, just fucking. And we're like, this is mad, you know. And we went then to the party, and there was like, I distinctly remember there was no real furniture, it was like picnic benches. I don't know whether he'd fucking tea leaf this for being twenty percent off, but they were all inside, and it's just all these like. Like, you know the steampunk thing? Like, you see it every time you go to Edinburgh Fringe. People wearing, like, top hats with goggles on them and all, and, like, big fucking yeah, yeah. leather coats. Yeah, kind of like what Richard Sherwood would wear to the shops, you know, that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. But they're all... And there's fucking fire breathers everywhere, people on unicycles and all, and jugglers, you know, you're like, this is a fucking weird... Like, we're used to going to our mate's house with fucking three litres of white lightning and just yeah, yeah. drink it till you pass out. But we're like, oh, this is so fucking <laughs> weird. And then we were like, right, we need to stick together because this is, like, older... Oh, it's all shit, that sort of shit going on. So I went then saw the guy's party it was and he was like, Oh, good to see you boys and all it was there's a spread in the kitchen there if you want to go in. We walked in, just the one with their whole no in you go, work away, so we're just in. And like because like, like if they were full adults, so we're like, you know, it's wolf is into us, like it's a good time. And we're eating fucking potato salad and pasta salad and steak the ham and all that and we were having a great time until we sort of saw a cat just walking across the spread and we're like, Oh no, stinking so we just kept what we had and edit and then after like I had eaten a bit of the potato salad I started feeling really fucking weird like what the fuck right. and then I went in this dark room I was like I ain't no book here same kind of feeling as I had from when we were, I was like fuck I don't know what's happening to me here so I went in this dark room and <laughs> as I just remember I must have fallen asleep and then I came to again <laughs> and when I did there was a guy that looked to me in my mind exactly like Haggard from Harry Potter on the on the drums just fucking I was like what the fuck's happening and I text him I was like where are you and he goes I don't know I'm in this room and I'm fucking seeing all these things like, what the fuck so then I eventually got him the two of us were like we need to go here because we're completely fucking wiped out and we bumped in the guy's party it was and he's like what the fuck is wrong with we're on with us here and he's like, like why what's wrong with, with you guys like, I don't know he goes do you have a potato salad and we were like yeah he goes I have drugs not no and we were like, fuck me. <laughs> no one was like, that's no one. But obviously they all knew because this is sort of shit these guys do. So apparently all the different fucking supplies, like fucking LSD and one other shit and the other. I had no idea. That's unbelievable. But it was like, I did not, you know, and, you just, and then you walk out the front, it was like all the, the women of the fire getting all blurred and you're hearing, and it's like, it's like no trans button, was it? Probably magic mushrooms and shit in it. Like I had no idea, but it was just fucking weird. And that was, that was, yeah, a fun memory. The, like that's me unreal. and him sometimes say, do you remember that party we went to? You'd pay to get into parties like that now. Oh, why? But you? then, again, that's what I'm thinking. Like, if the way to stay longer is I could have ended up like an eyes wide shut type thing, everyone just yeah. bucking everyone <laughs> upstairs. And then they'd pro I'd probably shut the party down because I was underage. You know, I'd probably be, ah, you are all nonsense. I'd be ultimate vengeance, wouldn't they? Quite good. But me if you want. <laughs> ah, you are all nonsense. <laughs> Selfie. <Yeah. laughs> Pays in. I have some of this. Fucking spike me with a potato salad, you bastard. <laughs> you know, a minute ago when you says, um, I came to, does that yeah. mean like you came round? Yeah. <laughs> Because the first time you said that, I thought you meant like you were lying down the grass and you came to, as in like T-O-O. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't come, no? No, no, no right. coming then. Yeah. I, I just love that phrase because of that. You know? I came to, then I woke up. <laughs> well, Unbelievable. But that was it. And then like I'd just been really sort of fucking weird about drugs after mm -hmm. being fully spiked, you know. That was a problem. And then another member at the Fringe when we were smoking something. Uh, I was wearing an Arsenal shirt, obviously because I'm fucking low all the time. You know? But um, not high I, up in the league, though. No, well, high enough for high us, enough. you know, for last year. But I just remember the shirt really sticking to me, and more than anything else, I was like, I'm self conscious because I feel like all my fat showing. I was like, no, stop it, and I just didn't really <laughs> smoke anything since because like that doesn't really agree with me. You know, people are like, oh, it's an easy one to do. Don't worry. Was this an occasion, or did somebody just go here? Do you want to join? I just think the boys were just having a good time and we're like to want right, some right. of this and you know what you know what it was like at that fringe it was, we, again we lived in a house similar to that fucking party house just a big house with yeah. everyone in it but it was just but you know what, I mean, what it was like when you're having a good time that, like it's some of those nights around that table were tremendous I well believe it and See, uh, I, uh, I, I I'm like 50-50 constantly where it's like I might try a wee something mm -hmm. but then I do, because I have kids and all too do you know what I mean I feel like under real pressure that I don't want, like I, I'm trying to be a role model to them, do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So I don't want to go over there and do drugs because that says to them, just go yeah. to Amsterdam and do drugs. But, but at the same time, you need, you need to live, no? Nah, fuck no. But that's what I mean. Yeah. But then what what would happen, because I've never done it before, how high would I be? Like am I going to phone them? Ah, you're adopted, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> We're, like I, I would need yeah. everything taken off me. I would need to take drugs and then just go into like a padded room. Mm -hmm. For like twelve hours, but, but and then have the owner on speed dial. I think you just have a couple of, of 
go. I don't think I would smoke right. anything. I wouldn't. I don't yeah. think I would ever smoke anything. But I would. I would take something like not. That's worse. I think if you smoke yeah? weed, yeah. I think if you yeah, listen, I'm not going to smoke this, but I'll do full. I'll, I'll do acid. Mm-hmm. You know, then you then you don't want to. Like, you'll come home and just be like, oh, I don't want to talk about it, and I'll be like. What are your eyebrows? <laughs> just, just They're cell tape the muscle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one at the top, one at the bottom. But you know what? I think that's a wee bit sort of not clamped down on it, but I think like it's not as as free and easy as it was before. And right, like right. but then that's what happens, I think, with Amsterdam. People go over there and just be like, Oh, you can do whatever you want, but then without actually like looking into what they're taking or whatever, mm-hmm. and then that's where Yeah wildness happens. Yeah, I don't know. I think in my head I always think the worst. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. I might end up going over there and just having like two pints of cider or something. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. don't know. I don't know. But then that was, that was like the thing we were chatting about. We went to soft play together, and we did. Next time, bring the kids. Our kids were there too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just we, me and you wrestling yeah. our tops off, and, and, and like we got the whole minutes. thing shut down, but it was worth yeah, it. it. Worth it. But the uh, you were saying about like you and Dylan were talking about going on holiday and bringing the kids with you, and you were a bit like unsure whether it'd be like the anxiety you get about bringing kids on holiday yeah I have, but I have anxiety I have anxiety 24-7 I really do like uh-huh. and I'm and I'm exhausted mentally and physically physically from just the kids like the, saying that they go to bed and but do you ever feel when they go to bed like the, my, my kids go to bed at 7 and we're uh-huh. quite strict on that because obviously me and Diona would gig at night mm-hmm. a lot of the times you know, so they need to be in bed before we leave the house but now we're what was it? What the fuck was I talking about? Anxiety. Kids Anxiety. in bed at seven. So now when the kids go to bed, it's like once or twice a week, Diona goes, I'm going to get a really early night. She goes uh-huh. to bed at eight o'clock and gets a full fucking 10 hours or something. Yeah. Whereas I'm like, no, I want to stay awake every second possible uh-huh. that my kids are sleeping because that's now my time or time where, it, do you know where you like don't have the responsibility? Yeah. And I just tend to do that more and more now and end up fucking knackered the next day. Yeah. And it just never... There's no end to it. Do you know what I mean? No, I, I, I feel you because I think I've kind of been on both ends of the spectrum, um, and also th- no, and this is too much of that. That joke has <laughs> been repeated a lot. But I ended, up, I ended up like for a long time, like when I was working for Toxic, um, I would have treated the evenings to be like that's the only time I could do comedy work. So mm-hmm. I go to work for the day, come home, put the kids to bed, and be like, right, turn on my brain, try to write. Whereas now it's like, no, you need to have some of your own time. But then you that sort of went the opposite, whereby I was trying to salvage so much of my own time that I was ending up fucking exhausting myself. Mm. Whereas now I'm kind of like, I try to go to bed a bit earlier. And like reading, that's the thing that's helped me because like, I don't know if you're you're the same. Sometimes like I'll go to bed and then I'll be on the phone and then I'll look at something and I'll be like, oh, fuck, I'll, I need to be doing something for this or I need to, I need to go down and write or something or I need to come up with ideas and then the next time you look it's after midnight you're fucking like, know, shit I'll be up at and 6 and then do you find too that if you do work close to bedtime it's hard for your brain to right, go mm-hmm. right, we're not writing jokes anymore it's yeah. time to sleep whereas I can't do that like I start, I got a VR headset last week uh-huh. oh, no. and all last night like I, I've had about 3 hours sleep but all last night like I could have got a good 8 9 hours solid uh-huh. But the first five hours of me being in bed, every time I closed my eyes, I was in this sort of VR world and I was setting the mm-hmm. boundary and stuff so that I didn't knock in the furniture and things like that. And my, I, I just, in your head? Or like did you have the set on? My, no, in my mind. Yeah. And my mind just couldn't differentiate from like real life and VR. And, it, and I woke up this morning and Diona was like, you need to not go on that so close All to right. bed. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> see, you're going to be like... Like, like frog your throat there you said and I thought you were like you woke up in the morning too. I was like you need to do that in that morning I said oh no what's real or what's no I could that freaks me out like I just it's, but it's the future it's unbelievable but see the phone like I I, I'm, I was terrible for just like the phone's the worst flicking you yeah. know the bane of myself and then now but, you're on your phone yeah but I I have now made the conscious effort that if I go to bed I plug it in set the alarm set it down and then read my book and yeah for maybe you'd probably scroll your phone an hour, an hour and a half. I probably read about half an hour of a book, and I'm like, I'm tired now, and go to sleep. I think that turns off the brain better. So I, fi- I finally, I've been reading a book since I met Catherine. This one book, and I'm, and she's Rolled like, you'll up. never finish that. Yeah, it's the witches. It's fucking hard to get <laughs> through. But and this one book, it was actually about an, an IRA tight, and it was a fucking great book. But I just never bothered reading it. And then I said at the start of the year, I'm going to finish this book and get it done. I'm going because last year I'd set one of my like goals where I'm going to read twelve books this year. Read one, Tom Smith's Fearless, really? but set me up for the whole year, so it's all good. Never take no for an answer, ever, ever, unless it comes to consent with the other oh. sex. No, nope. not, not even that book. Just says no. Right. Winners win, mate. 
Is this the last episode of Sluggy then? Yeah. Is, <laughs> yeah. is she done? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. No, obviously do, fuck's sake. If anyone takes that literally, go to the doctor, get your head seen too. <laughs> but um th- like this year I was like I wanna finish it. And and, I, and I'm, I'm my brain works in a way that I won't start something else until I finish that. So I won't mm. read another book really until that one's done. So finally got it finished. And that's my January book done, and I'm balls deep Class. in Arnold Schwarzenegger's book. Love at it. the minute now, and it's yeah. but the only thing about What's that it is called? I'll be book. It's <laughs> <laughs> called Be Useful, which is oh, fuck shit. Really? <laughs> yeah. But the only thing about it is, and I, and I bet you everyone that reads it reads it in his accent. Mm. You know, I'm looking at it being like, you must get up early in the morning, focus yourself on the day. Yeah. You know, and it's just you, and it takes me a long time reading that. Cause get to that, the chapter. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it should have been called. Yeah. Get to the chapter. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do that too yeah. every every time I read a book I read it in the accent like I've read like Stephen Gerrard's book yeah. all, and I'm reading it you know I <laughs> turn the page and I'm all yeah of course you know? and then uh, recently I read Bobby Firmino's yeah. so I read it in my mind in broken English yeah. I swear to fuck that's the truth and I do that with every single book but I'll tell you what the best book I've read recently last year I did what you did uh-huh. and I read uh, five books January, February, March, uh-huh. April, May and then I just got too busy coming up to the summer but uh, Andre Agassi's book yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah, it is fucking brilliant. Couldn't recommend it enough. Yeah. He see when he was born, his dad taped um, table tennis bats to his hands for Panther, <laughs> and he had a what do you call the wee thing that hangs on your on your crib? Like a oh yeah, wee nursery things. Yeah, wee, oh, fuck what a, a, a mobile. Yeah, mobile. Yeah. And that's that's that was, they were his toys when he was a he kid. He didn't want to be it. He wanted to be like a super villain, didn't he? He hated tennis. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you he, would. Yeah, you know, but he had no choice. It was like the army. Yeah, but, um, yeah. But I, I like a bit of that too. But a you regiment. Know, a bit of, like I, I do, I do. Or taping bats to kids' hands. I mean, I do that. I like to do that for fun. But yeah. I like just tape their hands together because can't move. No, why? <laughs> what am I doing? Like, what am I? I'm gonna get myself cancelled. But anyway. Discipline and like see especially whenever we were we were in Disneyland last week, and see the see when I see like I've given off about this person before. I go to Mickey Mouse. Uh, yeah, Mickey Mouse is son of it. I go to this thing every week, a rhythm and rhyme class with Matilda. I go twice a week. I go Tuesday and a, on a Saturday, and she loves it and I love it to the point now that I have rhythm and rhyme friends. You right, know, right, if people right. I just like that I see there. Next stage, I'm going to be like, do we go on like like dinner and stuff without the kids like the f- four of us it's like, whatever and um, there's in it you go in you sit in the circle there's these two it's in a library and they just do nursery rhymes kids love it sing a song do the actions it's free is days. it oh why by the way they'll check out the libraries if you don't cause there's a load of great shit going on in the library. there really is isn't it and it's fucking it's brilliant yeah. the one in Lurgan has like a wee slide and stuff for kids yeah. to play on like a wee sort of playhouse you think nice but it's it's good Lego and everything. Yeah, but it's, what are we are we routines so go to rhythm and rhyme. I shouldn't say when it was because people are gonna fucking do that. So like mm-hmm. they're going oh shit. But uh, you go to that, do the rhythm and rhyme class. After that, they, they lay books out on the floor. But then I go fuck that. I go up to the library and be like, I'm not hanging around with you guys. Go upstairs <laughs> and I read a book for, or like let her pick books. I read them. Probably put another half hour and then we go to a cafe or no, go to the park because there's Class. a park on the grounds so of the. Go there and then take her to the cafe. So that's that gives Catherine the uh, Tuesday morning to herself. Tuesday morning. And then I have a great time with her, so that's that's fine. But you go in and like the, the people that take it are sound, you know, shout out to the, the team. But there's this one woman who takes it and she's a bit more like old school looking, you know. She weird the weird thing is she drinks water out of a two litre empty bottle of milk, which I just find weird, but that's her own thing. Uh, she's strange, her own quirk. That. Yeah, because she's a wee woman too, so she gets the the and then it's like a whole thing, her <laughs> and then everyone's kind of going. Is anyone else seeing this? Is, is that not weird? Like, I feel like if it, like if she was doing the Christmas, I'd buy her like a water bottle or something yeah, because yeah. you know it's just it was a weird thing. Is it blue top or green? Green, green at least. Being you know, healthy so at least. least. Yeah. yeah no, yeah. so if she could be drinking out of red, like, but yeah. well, well, you know, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll start. We'll start. Pink too. Yeah, but listen, not all of us can be athletes. So. But she said one day, she's like, "Listen, we're in a library, so you know, keep the chatting." And amongst it to yourselves and keep the kids in the circle you know don't and I think that's fair enough that's yeah. her there's just one woman who just comes, she comes every time and just her kid just runs around their circle she just follows her around going I'm like well, why here go mm-hmm. to the park yeah, you know yeah. what I mean don't be yeah, it's and, then, own place. and then like I've become that parent where I'm sort of like <coughs> looking people being like is anyone going to say anything here or? yeah and it's just and she the mum's just like oh and the kid was the other day running and she tripped and fell and I loved it you know, and I was like, you know what? That's what you get. Did you like high five yourself? 
But no, then behind, I just, just I go just, behind and hike five yourself in the future. Five with short arms and a big body, can't reach. <laughs> do it under your leg. Yeah, I tried to do that with the dog lead the other day and just dropped it. <laughs> it's like, fuck. But uh, yes, yeah, so I, I I enjoy that. No, I shouldn't because it's sly, but you know, fuck them. Exactly. And, like, dick. and then see when we were in Disney, some of the behaviour of. Now, I know that our people from this country, there's a lot of good people in this country, but also there are some of the worst people yeah. maybe that live in the world yeah. come from this country and see the behaviour of kids on an airplane and can't have it fucking terrible you know terrible and see run about in the hotel we're staying in there were a few people who were I recognised from the flight and they were coming down in pyjamas I'm like you know that's to me for their breakfast breakfast no evening time they come down like drinking and all in their PJs and I'm like what are you adults? doing adults adults what you know big stinkers and all you know with that's no bras on that's the worst for you probably yes. You know what? Yeah, and it was just it was like what? Do you, and I think that's a certain thing you just need to by like see if you're leaving in your house or your room. Aye, wear clothes. Throw a bit of clothes. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. not a big deal. And people are like I know, but I've got other people with busy lives. You can you can fucking throw a pair of clothes on. See yeah. your kids running around for, like they're all sitting. You know the baggage belt going around and they're all jumping up and down that and, and then the parents are like get down and they're like no. there's just no control over them. And I was like no, mm. and where my kids were standing beside. Like that, you know? <laughs> but I just think that's certain things, and like I really am bad with table manners and stuff. I'll be eating, you know, like hot, like night Friday's okay. Catherine showed at me last My elbows night. In the table. <laughs> so, but you're not eating, it's all right. True. But Catherine, uh, I was like, Holly, you're eating with your mouth open. <laughs> she was like, Yeah, sorry, daddy, I have a blocked nose, can't breathe. And Catherine's like, Yeah, she can't breathe. And I was like, Well, she may quick, <laughs> you know. But I just think, like, like I'll not give her anything unless she's like, Please, you know what yeah. I mean? Or, and then, like, if I, if, like, like this morning, I put her breakfast out and said, like, Can I have a spoon, dad? Yeah, no problem. I handed it over, and then I was like, Oh, thank you. I'm like, there you go. That's it. You know, yeah. these kids are just wild. And I just think that you're not. I and mean, I'm not. What another thing? The I saw like see littering and all. It all starts, doesn't it? I like, uh, littering's one of my pet peeves. Like I have many of them, but that and manners too. Yeah. No, I please thank it. you. Can't stand it. And like you know, another thing that pisses me off: <coughs> people in restaurants asking for food and telling the the waiter instead of like, "Could I have this, please?" or Chips, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my god, it's in burger. It? It's yeah. like you love the the server to just be like, no, we can fuck off, you know. Yeah. When they say give me as well, so yeah. instead of like, uh, could I, I have, have a portion of chips, please? Yeah. You know, whereas like, uh, give us, give us the chicken, and then you're like, I'll headbutt you, like Joe. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I, I have a real thing for like, them. like see when when people treat you like you're a servant, mm. that pisses me off. Yeah. Get me this. Yeah, it's clicking. Poor. Can't have it, and but see, like I, I do think that there should be something. Now, I mean, this is not to be extreme, but there should be some kind of like group that go around just taking people and, and getting rid of them. Yeah, yeah, and it should just be like you. Paramilitaries. No, the paramilitaries are shit to do. Call. You know One what I mean? There's, but there's they, they've got to sell know. and stuff. You know what I mean? They've drugs to sell. Fucking all mm. that stuff to do. They shouldn't be. Um, you know. But I just think like you should. I don't know. I don't know. Without sounding like like. There needs to be somebody like Hitler, you know. It's it's, <laughs> but it's just certain people just need to be stopped. They like, should be allowed out in public if you're in, you know, mm. in your PJs. Were there many adults there without kids in Disneyland? Oh, a few, and it's yeah. weird. Did they get arrested? No, no. They should. They, some of that's so weird. Like I've only learned that there's a thing. Catherine was like, "Oh, but there's this thing going on." Like it's like again a lot of stuff. Like to me social media has a lot to answer for anyway because it's all fake it's all mm -hmm. done towards an algorithm and if you just you know what I mean there's no it's, nothing's real nobody posts their normal shit on it like that's why I always say like if we're doing like a valentine stuff or we're away on a holiday we're not posting stuff flat out all the time mm -hmm. or we're not you know what I mean because we know we're happy we know what's going on we just enjoy the moment like take photos by all means keep it for memories but you shouldn't post it up so people to go like the validation you should be confident yeah. in your own stuff they don't need that shit but she's like there's a thing that's like on especially TikTok she's like being a Disney adult is like a thing and it's almost like justifying grown ups acting like fucking weird children mm. do you know what I mean it's like no you can be an adult who likes Disney you're not a Disney adult yeah. you know, unless you're yeah. fucking Elsa or something then yeah. in which case but like we went we got took the kids to uh to uh, 
princess lunch it's called which by the way I need to really fucking mortgage my house to take them to it <laughs> but it was a fun experience good memories and it's like where you go and you have your dinner and then the princesses basically come that's right yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah dessert but, yeah let it go do you <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> but they come around and just be like oh hello and all yeah. and we walked in and there was a full woman like talking to Rapunzel who was in character and all and she was like yeah, crying talking to Rapunzel with her fucking stupid Disney ears on a grown no one, woman no one looks more of a dick than an adult wearing Disney ears now I know some parents yeah. do it with their kids and all but see if you're just walking around and it's always big fucking lumps you know <laughs> walking around I didn't want to say that <laughs> Always. I was thinking that yeah big said. lumps walking along her ear and then if a big bow in the middle like dun, 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 fucking, she was all like I can't believe I'm meeting you know and I felt like going that's not, Rapunzel's a cartoon yeah, you know, yeah. that's not yeah. the real but I was like oh fuck what's this so then they, they came around the table that was fine and the kids were like loving it and getting their photos and their wee faces and all very sweet yeah. however Mulan fuck you <laughs> Because what had happened, I was there, my folks were there as well, and both my kids need to go for a piss. So Catherine took the kids to the toilet, and I was just left at the table with my mum and dad. And I was probably just sitting there like this. Mulan walks to the table, gets down, looks at me, and goes, Hello! And I was like, Hmm? As if your man yeah. brought just you. Yes. So she genuinely <laughs> thought that I was just some big doughhead. <laughs> they mean brought along and she's like hello and I was like hmm hi and she goes well, what's your name and I was like Dave and she's like yeah. she's like ooh are you here with your mom and dad and I was like yeah but also my wife and kids and he's like oh oh right I'll come back and I was like yeah you fucking will come back if your legs still yeah <laughs> Bitch. and oh, then my dad was laughing his head off he goes like you, and he goes sit like your resting face and I was like and he's like yeah I get it and I was like oh fuck sake that and then I got even more annoyed too because Mulan's got issues with the Huns so she must have seen us at right. the table and gone oh I other types of Huns here to fucking get as well but I was oh, so I was mortified I was like fuck how, <laughs> how bad do I look like that I maybe that's why I'm so angry at people in pyjamas I look like the sort of guy should be in his pyjamas would you recommend uh, it? What looking like this? <laughs> no, going to oh, your man dad. No, you know what? That was a good move because they were great. That's you know, to be able to. But I was so embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> For fuck's sake! But um, they were they were good. They had a good time. They wanted to come and see the kids. Obviously, you have a great time, and then we could we could leave them for a bit, and then we could go on a couple of rides together, or just fucking go to you know go to the toilet together. A couple of rides. Yeah, there you go. There's a big yeah. space mountain for you there. For <laughs> why? Um, no, obviously didn't happen. But uh, yeah, it, it was really good. But then my dad again, he had another fucking thing. So my dad, I think, is similar to me in terms of like people with bad manners wind them up. But we went in this ride. Now, we waited for about half an hour. The kids were starting to play up at this point to go on the Snow White ride. And you, just, you get into, like, this wee coal fucking buggy. And you go around and see the whole story of Snow White. And as we were getting off, I got off, got the kids off, got Catherine off, and my dad got off. And then, as my mum was getting off, his dude just fucking banned her one. Like, hit her with the fucking shoulder, and he knocked her back into the no thing. Way. And my dad was like, what the fuck? And he lost the head, grabbed the guy by the coat, and all sorts of fucking whack this French woman like who works for this he's like no 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 monsieur he's disabled he's disabled monsieur <laughs> some guy was getting on like priority and he was like and he just bounced into my mum without fucking seeing her my dad was like the biff just so like, excited yeah but like just like no no knowledge of what was going on and I like to look at him this is why like not all the all disabilities are visible and he just looked like me <laughs> maybe that's what my aunt's problem was she just <laughs> this guy but it, like and then he, my dad was like there's fucking fuck all wrong with him and all he's like fucking it was Jeez. like yeah so then it was quite funny because afterwards because like it was a whole scene and like, everyone thought my dad was going to beat this this year but I yeah, yeah, call him an ignorant <laughs> bastard and all the guy was French you know fucking <laughs> and then the thing was annoying my dad as well because the dude was just looking at him with a big grin in his face and <laughs> <laughs> nothing more furious than anything <laughs> but then he was like so he was so embarrassed and then um, where we got up and all was, we went to this place I think it's called Casey's Corner it's like, like a coffee shop where like you get your fucking buns and coffee and all and because Disney are so busy it's like people <laughs> as we're all sitting at this table like facing towards the, the castle and as the <laughs> as the people kind of fucking dispersed this dude's just sitting directly opposite 
guess it might die about 20 metres. I guess. <laughs> and my dad comes to me. A fucking cunt's goading me. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. And he was just, but he was so like. He was in like two, and he was wearing like a, a sort of like a like a, a color like this, like a box sort of leather jacket with a thing around him, and a flat hat. Just <laughs> was his old mum like <laughs> staring directly at my dad. He's like, he's, and then he goes, "Fuck all wrong with him," and I'm like, "No, I think there is." And he and he did not believe there was anything wrong with this guy uh, until that night we were watching the Disney parade, and at the end of it, it sort of goes up the street. And then there's a big banner, and then people just walk behind it, and he was just front and center of the banner. <laughs> and he's like, all right, okay, I get it. But it's just that moment, see, when the crowd parted, and I saw him, and he just, he couldn't be more like, <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Oh, so, so Are you going to talk about this in stand-up? Have you, have I don't you know. Work stuff out? I think so. I think I'll probably do the Milan bit, like, but I don't know about the other guy, because <laughs> like I should, I, w- I should have taken a photo of him just to be able to show people to see what he, but it was... And he had like he he he, he looked a wee bit like Louis Anderson, you know the comedian, mm. but like brown haired Louis Anderson. So he <laughs> like it was such a fucking strange character. But like he oh, rock yeah. like he he rocked my mum like, and he's probably yeah. about twenty stone. He's a big unit, and like my mum is a fucking a pensioner now. Like and was she all right? Like yeah, was yeah, because she... like she sort of stumbled back in the thing, but kept her feet. And then dad was just like, because I, I just got the kids off and just heard all this commotion. Mm. Look back, he is disabled. <laughs> and I was like, fuck. <laughs> And my dad's such a grumpy big bastard too, so he just, so he was, you could tell he was fuming and he got all, and, like, Fuck. and then he's sitting down having a coffee to calm down and it all settled. <laughs> just, hello. Amazing. He's fucking Amazing. Uh, I have a confession. See, do you know the, the word Disney? Yeah. I always thought, do you know the, the actual font that they use for uh-huh. that, the official font for Disney? I always thought the Y was a P and it was like Disney, but, yeah. but the P was silent. Yeah. So I, I genuinely always thought that it was D I S N E P. But to see the day, I didn't know the day was the day. I thought it was like an A for ages. Really? I was like, how's that Disney? Why is that the logo? And they're like, it's a D. And then, like, mm. as someone who uses the D. <laughs> very infrequently but the, the letter day a, a yeah. lot in his name I didn't, didn't get it and then I actually started copying the mm-hmm. the Disney day for my like signature and I changed it you know, um, what, 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 Walt Disney the actual man himself uh-huh. he did bad shit or something didn't he is that him or Roald Dollar? who was it I, I think no I think Walt Disney was he he's some sort of was he an anti-Semite or something or he liked the Nazis I think or some sort of like let, let's go and have a look and see what Walt Disney there's did. definitely one of them that is like ah, you're not supposed to like him anymore Walt Disney controversy we'll go for that but no nah, I mean like Disney's still on the rip isn't it yeah yeah our daughter watches um, Frozen every single day yeah listens to the songs every single day we're going to school and she's just belting them out. Three songs. Um, Love is an open door. Yeah. Let it go. And do you want to build a snowman? And it's yeah. just constant every single day in our house. Let's see. Saving Mr. Banks. Let's see. What is it? It's a movie. Walt Disney's an anti-Semite. Right. Well, there's the famous Three Little Pigs scene in which the wolf was portrayed as a Jewish peddler. I mean, that and later reanimated. Yeah. But... Walt Disney was racist. These charges stem from pr- primarily the use of racial stereotypes. Do you know what? Racial stereotypes happened more in the for- like the 40s. You know what yeah, I mean? It's yeah. like... Yeah, um, if he's still alive, he's hardly still yeah. going to be doing but then it's shit like, like that. It's stuff of the time as well, isn't it? Like, yeah. when people are like, oh, these, these people like did all this great stuff, but also they own slaves. But yes, it's terrible to have had it, slaves and the slave, obviously, culture and everything that came along with it is awful. But at the same time, if people are doing it at the time, you know, it's the people are doing it. You know what yeah, I mean? You you do yeah. it. You know exactly. if, if that's kind of what the. <coughs> this, I know what you mean? Yeah, so it's like it's hard to know, but I don't think he's like, you know, terrible Walt mm-hmm. Disney. But Are you glad to be back anyway? Are you glad to be? No, I am. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. to be back to work now today because I sort of feel like I don't know if you get the same anxiety about work where if you're away you're like fuck I need to be doing stuff or mm. you know have a load of shit to catch up on and and then I totally forgot so stupid stupidly that it's half term this week I and know, I was I like ah do you feel like it's so hard to get back into it when it's yeah. half term because the kids Hot are off yeah. yeah like see even now today I'm like fuck I need to get back and like Holly's got swimming today to go to and I'll take her to that probably but um, 
it's just yeah, fucking, they're in the house way more because obviously yeah. the school to go to, like yeah. Matilda goes to the nursery three days a week, and then that'd be a time like I go to the gym or whatever. Whereas now I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna have to go. You Is know? this something you started from January, the gym, or was it before January? Uh, whenever I you're hitting it hard now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Whenever I was feeling like I just I just lost a stone just before I went on holiday, and I've put yeah. on a wee bit more. Some sort of a bit more than a stone, or just no, a no, wee a wee bit more. So I'm, I am not technically a stone off anymore, but right, just right. so I'll, I'll get that all off again this week. A but two later on, you'll be alright. Yeah, but no, when either. Yeah, and <laughs> poo. <laughs> Too That's much Disney, Disney, isn't it? Yeah, Disney. I know. I remember saying to Catherine, I, was like, I don't know what I what did I do to her yesterday? It's fucking hilarious. She said something to me in French about like something that means something like the No no, he's disabled. Yes. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> but it was something like the joy of the vitra or something. I don't know what it was she meant to say. And I thought she said the joyous beaver. And like mm. she was in a bad mood. And I thought she was calling me the joyous beaver, so I started going around pretending to be <laughs> So fucking stupid. She's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm the joyous beaver." And she's like, "That's not what I fucking said." And I'm like, "Ah!" Oh. And the both of us wet ourselves. But oh, what's he saying? There? Do you ever say stuff and it just either goes over their head or they just don't get it? And I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm getting to the point now where I'm wasted on the owner. She mm-hmm. just is like, mm-hmm, or just ignores what I've said. Yeah, and I'm like, that's a fucking See, brilliant joke. That way. must be annoying. More annoying probably for you than me because at least she thought I, it would be more annoying for you. No, because at least I can go. She doesn't understand because she's just hmm. she's she's an, a normal. She's a regular citizen. She's not a comedian. Yeah. But sometimes I like, will like say stuff and it'll, like whenever we were, we were away, my I I went to, for a piss and. and uh, it took me a while to find the toilet because Disney's the vast and everywhere. And so I came back. Um, with my mom and dad, my mom goes to me, Oh, did you come across the toilet? And I went, Nah, just peeing it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it took her a minute. And she's like, Oh, you're disgusting. You, uh, you know, and uh, that's how that happened to me at the gig, at gig I did on Saturday. Big shout out actually to Adam Mogi and the uh, Mogi's Fun House that we did in Antrim. It was, it was brilliant. And Jono, who, who runs it as well. Uh, it was a fucking great night. But afterwards, we were, there's this woman chatting to me. And Mogi, who which I've, I've been told to call him now because I've just called him Adam, but Mogi? probably just Mogi, yeah. Okay. And um, the woman was chatting about how she's like watched a lot of podcasts and stuff, and um, would go to the gigs, and she was like, "Yeah, whenever I heard Willie T was was going to do here, I came, and when I saw Aaron Butler was going to be here, I came, and I was like, fuck you, do you like them, don't you? <laughs> and she goes, and like, Mogi was laughing, I was totally over Didn't her head, it. and she goes, and see, whenever you, you're you you're here, I'll come, and I went, well, I mean, I'll do my best, <laughs> but, and again, just totally, but it was, that was really a yeah. lot of fun, but yeah. Is that a monthly gig? I think so, yeah, I think yeah. it started, started, with, but it was, it was, because again, it was one of those ones you don't know what to expect, it was a bit, it was rowdy at the start, but then mm. everyone, it was just, it was just good, and you know when you try new bits too, and you're fucking going, yes, yeah. and then yeah, did obviously some of the old stinkers too, that just are in the, it in was the outdoor camp. as well, you said? Outdoor, but it was all yeah. nicely heated, and it was, it was just great, Class. really enjoyed it, That's good. but okay, yeah, sometimes like I'll say jokes <laughs> to Catherine, and like, I'll, I'll show you one that I said to her the other day, and she didn't laugh, and I don't know why I found it so stupid and funny, but uh, I wrote up my notes and I said to her, is this funny? And she went, no. I <laughs> like, what are you doing? Um, oh, the notes section's great, isn't it? For just when you think of something or something funny happens, you just go bang straight in. Yeah. And so You can just go back to it another time. Wait. <laughs> and she was like, what does that even mean? <laughs> She didn't get it? <laughs> no. I'll tell people what the joke is anyway because I'm not going to use it. Uh, your mum's fat and plays the meat flute. I call her Jizzo. <laughs> Catherine was like, nah. I was like, okay, I'll not use that. Um, but I yeah, sometimes... Should. I think you should use uh, it. Yeah. I'll see how it goes. But yeah. sometimes I'll say stuff and she'll be like... And then, you know, when you're like... Like, I don't know. It might actually, be, obviously, be a bit different for you because you do more one-liners. But, like, if I have a premise or a joke, i be like, is this funny? And I'll tell her and she'll go, no. Really? And I go, ah, and then, and then if I, and I'm like, no, you're not getting that. I know it'll work. Yeah. And then she go to show me, like, ah, it was funny. You know, I'm like, yes. Yeah. But then you can't take one person's opinion, too. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because comedy is obviously so subjective. And then also, do you find that probably, again, this is what interests me with you being married to another comedian as well. Like, do you sometimes, like, were you always on? with each other if you're running bits or, or sometimes so she'd be like I don't want to fucking talk about this shit now I feel like, like we're hardly ever on around each other like there's the odd time where we would just sort of have a laugh and banter and stuff but a lot of time it's just like figuring out what's going on with the kids and mm-hmm. sleep 
training and you know yeah. it's just all fucking boring mundane shit because that, that you just have to do that's what i sometimes feel like with <coughs> being a parent is you almost you're not like in a relationship with your wife because you become almost like two shift workers yeah just keeping yeah. these two wee jerks yeah alive that's and it, me, and, me and dion obviously we run our company as well yeah cheesy grin productions mm-hmm. then we're both comedians Cheesy Quim. Yeah. yeah. It's different though, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, so, so just don't concerned. watch it. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're obviously both comedians and then we're parents. So we almost have this weird kind of thing where it's like, there's the odd time, like it was about two weeks ago, the kids went to bed one night and then we went downstairs and we started watching TV and I was like, oh, we're we're now a married couple. Do you know yeah. what I mean? We're, we're no longer the parents or the, yeah. the, because we'd had maybe a couple of meetings that day with our production company. And then a lot of our spare time, we're talking about uh, just figuring out things with the kids from their sleeping to their eating, to their, all these habits. Mm-hmm. And then we're um, talking about comedy just constantly. So it's almost like when we get time where we're not doing any of those three things, it's like you're reevaluating like, your relationship together you're yeah. like oh we're not sort of business associates now we're not yeah. parents you, per se it's it's weird it's do like, you allocate time for like just the two of you is that possible or is it we do at times the odd time we'd have dinner together when the kids go to bed mm. which is nice um, we did date night for a while which every maybe once a month the other mm. person just took it upon themselves we're like right um, keeps fucking Tuesday night free mm-hmm. and the other person would not tell them anything and we would just sort of put together like theme nights I think I sent you a video, didn't I, of like a, what do you call it, like a crime scene? Kind yes. Of? We had like a, a... Yes, that's right. What do you, what do you call that? Murder mystery Murder night? mystery, yeah. So I, we had I, a, know, I wish you hadn't got that because I was... You know when you're so close to remembering? Yeah. yeah. So we had a murder mystery night and I got a, a bin bag and made like a fake body mm-hmm. and tied it up and stuff and had the bin bag and the, the white lines around yeah. it. And then I had like um, police interceptor kind of CB radio mm-hmm. sound effects on YouTube. Yeah. I had candles lit and I had donuts and stuff because mm-hmm. we were going to solve this case like we were police officers or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it just had a whole kind of thing like that. And then we've done like a massage night and we've done oh, wow. painting each Whose other. Idea was that? I think I was mine. Yeah, I think why? it was mine. Of course I'm, it was. Painting each other? Do you mean like drawing or? Body paint. No, no, this was like sitting across from each other at the kitchen yeah. table. Like at the same guy my dad. Yeah. <laughs> Although if you see my painting of Diona, mm-hmm. it's it's horrific. Yeah. Like Diona was all, what are you doing? It's not a joke. And I was yeah. like, I wasn't trying to be funny. <laughs> this is me genuinely trying to draw you. It was fucking shit. <laughs> and she drew me w- really well. But uh, so we've started to do things like that. And it's, yeah. it's really nice. You know, it keeps the spark alive. And uh, it's, very, it's very important, especially like as parents. And I'm sure mm-hmm. as you know as well. And. Um, especially like me and you probably both consider ourselves to be almost like stay at home dads yeah. even though we're both full time professional comedians but um, yeah it's just about trying to juggle everything but mm-hmm. keep that healthy balance and always make time for each other yeah, cause I sometimes I, where I struggle is to make time for the like the the writing process of bits you know mm. like you don't where do you fit that in amongst everyone yeah. else sometimes whereas like yeah, yeah. It, especially with half, half term you know like but I think the, the last two years I think have uh, it's only the past maybe month or two that I've really kind of had a, a wake up call and I've just been like um, I, I really need to put more time and effort into mm-hmm. my actual stand up because I write jokes and I do nothing about it I don't try and perfect them or work on them I just go oh that's a fully formed joke yeah. that'll do and then I learn it 10 minutes before the gig mm-hmm. and go out and tell it and um the past two years I've suffered like immensely from me having the kids all day or whatever saying mm-hmm. the way I work and I have them by myself by the time they go to bed I'm supposed to be getting my laptop out and learning stuff and going over stuff yeah. and writing but I'm too tired because mm-hmm. I've just I haven't had a second all day Do you know it's but exhausting uh, that's the thing like, back to what you were saying at the very start about when the kids go to bed I sometimes find it's hard to get back into doing stuff after like the, the calm down of the kids so you could decompress yeah. from the day and you're like yeah and then you just don't have the energy to like yeah. like that's why I try to so hard. go to the gym in the mornings because there's no yeah. way I do anything in the evening yeah. by the but time you have your dinner you're just yeah. like because my kids we try and sync their naps so that they both have an afternoon nap Yeah. but even then you, you exercise you get a shower you make a coffee and you're waking them again Yeah. it's like the time that when you don't have them flies by Yeah. like flies by because that was the, the, the biggest transition for me was to, to lose the penis and um, no, <laughs> to when I left work I was like, I'm gonna have so much time. I was like, there'll be like, I'll have eight hours a day back, and then now that I'm, in, I'm like, I don't. You don't. You don't you get don't. second. You but don't. then now it's like, well, I couldn't go back to the day job now at all. I just yeah. wouldn't be able to fit in the shit that I need to into the day. You'd have to bring your kids with you. Yeah, and like I actually thought today, um, Holly's been a wee dick, 
at soft play and I thought I was going to have to go and get her and bring her here and like stick her in the corner like really? with colouring in yeah because like there's a thing that like back to discipline in the kids she's got in this real habit and she's six of like lifting smaller kids and like I don't know why she fucking like, I went into the soft playing holiday and she was li- like holding this other kid and I was like Holly put the kid and then she really like freaked out and started crying and all I was like you're always shouting at me I'm like I'm just telling you not to lift the kids yeah. and then today she lifted fucking another kid who's like one of our like best friends youngest who'd be so we have two the friends who are a boy and they have two boys but they're same age as Holly and Matilda so she, Holly lifted the smaller one and, I, and then she dropped them and hurt them and then I was like oh my god like that's the thing that annoys me just not doing what you're told and I was like, like so now I think Catherine's telling her that when dad gets home you're in it like yeah because he's cross but what does that mean nowadays though what what like you you obviously like I, I had a grey up I got battered the all times mm-hmm. you know you'd have took a beating and it would have been just the norm whereas yeah. nowadays you, nobody touches anybody so what how, how do kids get punched I just these days think how you get punched punished all oh, right like well st- no like, like, I, like I have two teenagers yeah. and my teenagers it's like you would you don't grind them now you do the opposite you'd be almost like get off your computer or give yeah. me your phone and go outside yeah and then they stand at the front no, door like, you know? I, I just think if you threaten something you have to go through with it so like uh, and the biggest one that's a kick in the balls is with the tablets because they're fucking mm-hmm. great if you need like 10 oh, minutes yeah, here or there yeah. but then if you're like like if Matilda not getting her tablet for a day you may as well just bat, bat down the hatches having a shit day because mm. you know she'll want like she's non-stop can I play games can I call her in so you like have to have loads of activities ready for her yeah. but with Holly like it's like yeah you have to just go you're not, don't get any tablet or like you're not going to soft play or like it was a couple of weeks ago she'd done something and she goes to this youth club thing on Thursday I was like you can't go and like she loves it and I know she loves it but then if you say you can't go to it and she's still bad and you let her go yeah. she'll just keep you know what I mean and that's the thing I think <laughs> that's where you go wrong like, isn't it? yeah because even, even with the difference between me and my sister I think when my sister was born she needed like a, she, was, she was kept in the hospital for ages because she was a twat uh, no because <laughs> no, she needed, like had a whole blood transfusion on something and like my mum and dad were, like really like f- like oh she's this precious little and like she's 35 or something now or 32 like she's still not but they let her away with so much more whereas like you say I had to get whooped hmm. I think as well when you're a boy it's much easier to just get get dug yeah, than yeah, it yeah. is the if you little like I've, I've not hit my girls at all maybe like smack them in the bum the all time but never like sore you know mm. just like but um i think like you just i know like i got whooped you know, and yeah, it was, yeah. but again I, I knew not to do stuff which yeah. is uh, whereas like even like nowadays even with the, like the threat of the police or something or a teacher shouting at me i'd be fucking oh let's not do that mm. whereas now like i remember even my old job on antisocial behavior i'd be out to people being like oh your son's putting windows in in the estate with the stones my son wouldn't do that and you're like well, he has he's fully done it you yeah. know and it's just like the, you got to take responsibility yeah. on the discipline too I that's think that's it they're the ones on news, news line 630 and they're yeah. like now he was no saint to mm-hmm. somebody who's got fucking battered by 15 people yeah dead but, in the ditch but do you know what that's the thing and like I love the girls more than anything obviously as you, as you would like and again this is the thing you, you, you say obviously some people don't you know what yeah. I mean some parents some people have kids and they shouldn't you know and that's life and some people would love to have kids and don't and it's not fair and that's the world but I think if you say you're not getting something you have to just as much as you want to be sound like and if you yeah. say Holly like, you're not getting this like, if Matilda, like I brought them the Smiths for something because they got vouchers for Christmas and she's been a wee dick and I was like well Matilda's can get a present but you can't and I had to take her around to Smiths and be like sorry next time mm. you can get it yeah. and as hard as that was and you just want to not be mean to her but you're like well that's yeah. you know you did that that's living for tomorrow that's what that yeah. is and that's the best way to live I, I yeah. never do that I, everything for me is like just right now and today yeah. and just just today yeah. and Diona's like six months down the line she's yeah. like you have to build for this and for that and for mm-hmm. this and I'm like just let's just get through today yeah. see that's the thing I, I'm sort of a bit like that I love a plan love mm. the like if I start my working week I'm making a plan of stuff to do even though the kids are going what they're doing I love that and I like to tick off my to-do list even from work days but at the same time if something's a problem I'll not I'll not worry about the problem until the time comes wherein you need to deal with the problem yeah. do you know what I mean because yeah. Catherine will be like what about this and I'll be like well whenever I'm at the bridge I will cross it She's like, you're a fucking pain in my arse. And I'm like, well, I just don't. And like, even with going on holidays and stuff, and she'll be buzzing for weeks and I'll not care until like, say you have like three three gigs coming up, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and you're going away on the Sunday. When I get the last gig done on the Saturday, buzzing for some holiday. It's bliss, isn't it? Yeah. It's heaven. Yeah. But then up until that, I'll be like not thinking, I'll pack my bags or do whatever, but I'll not be like in the zone to have fun until I'm like yeah. all the work's done. 
What I don't like though is when you have a holiday booked and you have no gigs before you go. So yeah. you feel like you haven't earned it. Yeah. So you're going away and you're like, I feel like I'm I'm robbing someone here. Yeah. Do you like do you, when you go away to kind of escape everything and yeah. just sort of decompress and stuff? Whereas uh, if if I haven't gigged, I'm just like. I feel like I've, I've cheated the system or something yeah. here. Like, I shouldn't be allowed to go away because I haven't heard it. Yeah, but then see sometimes that too. Like, I don't know if you've found it, but I think now I wouldn't call going away with my children a holiday. Like, not a it's, bit. Not a bit. It's just stress. And yeah. you're doing stuff now. They love it and it's great. And it's almost maybe better when you're looking back on the photos and the memories. Hmm. But at the time, you're like fucking flat out. You're stressed out. Yeah. Like, you almost need a holiday with your wife for a couple of days after you've been away with the kids. Do they like yeah, try and come yeah. back into normality? Hundred percent. Do you want to tuck the kids up their mums or mum and dads at um on Saturday there, Saturday to yesterday, and the whole time I beat myself up for like just up feeling guilty. Off. Beat myself both, <laughs> but mostly beat myself up for just that that I wasn't there. Like I had mm-hmm. the opportunity to go, but the owner was like, "Why don't you stay? It would do you a world of good. Yeah. You know, just get a break, get a, a rest and stuff." And then I just spent the whole time just being like, ah, I, I was riddled with guilt. Like I should be up there. I should be, you know, I should be driving and doing mm-hmm. be relaxing in the in the passenger seat. The kids would be sleeping in the back. And you you know, just take it off into the river, just <laughs> do a Richard Hellman. <laughs> <laughs> but like that, yeah. I think that's the worst thing, isn't it? Because that's that's again, it's all like we've really done stuff this year like the turn of the year to be like, let's try and do things better and let's try to and for us it's the guilt of it hmm. it's like it's almost like if I'm going to do something I'm like are you okay and it's like you know and Catherine's like oh can I do this I'm like yeah like any time but that's it do you not feel at times too yeah. like when the other person does something you're like Aye, well, yeah. of course go and do that I yeah. don't care it's, it's nothing do you yeah. know what I mean you're fine with the kids Yeah. but when it's reversed you're like oh, I don't want to leave her yeah. in her room with the kids it's hard and and then it's like, like with, with work based stuff I'd be like oh, I have all the shit to do but then I'm like I'm afraid to leave the kids hmm. and then I just need to do it you know and I think yeah. we're, we're getting better at that and like with, like of an evening now, like, I know the, the winter nights are harder, but, like, sometimes Catherine's like, okay, I just feel like I'm stuck in the house. I'm like, well, go and do whatever you want. It's like, it's mm. sweet. Like, almost if you go out in an evening, I love it. Yeah. Because I have time to do what I want. I want to stick a football on. Like, exactly. Like, it was great. See, yesterday she went out with um, Holly to a birthday party, and I just watched the whole Arsenal. 6-0. Six nil win over West Ham with Matilda. It was great. She sat in my knee. Not, not me at all. Brilliant. But now we'll go and get duffed at home with Burnley next weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's guaranteed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Assert. But you know, Tip see stuff like that. Like I think, like I'm trying to figure out a bit at the minute about how cancel plans are both the wor- worst thing in the world and the best thing in the world. So if they're your plans and they get cancelled, nothing's better. Mm-hmm. Like you, know, you have to go and do something. Like actually, sorry, we were, our kids are sick. We can't do that. And you're like, yes, get the fucking stay. Yeah. Whereas if like your wife has plans to go out, you work out exactly what you're gonna do in the house, and then if she cancels her plans, it's fucked. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like I, I remember she had a big do out with our mates, and I was like, I'm gonna. I had a movie that was coming on. I was gonna watch. Like it's fucking just out of Netflix. <laughs> I'm gonna get pizza in. I'm gonna feed up. You know the kids are going to bed at fucking half four. Yeah. Great. And then she's like, oh, it's cancelled. And I just was like, and she's like, so what are we gonna do? And I was like, well my night's not like you could maybe go upstairs and read a book <laughs> or something but I'd yeah. rather you know it's like oh sure I'll do that with you and then yeah. you're like oh what are you going to watch and it's like yeah so it was like there was Dave Chappelle's new special and she's like oh sure I don't like stand up do you want to watch Love Island I'm like, <laughs> just fucking do whatever you want to do you should say I don't like attractive girls I know but that's another thing see now the new gla- have you watched the new gladiators yeah I like it I think it's great but yeah. then like at the start I was like I don't fancy any of them because there's no jet and now I'm like Sabre's alright she's like what hmm? really I'd be like Sabre just, just strong and all <laughs> the tattoo in her leg and all for. and she'd be like well, don't be at that and, she goes, and then she goes like but she doesn't even look kind of like me I'm like yeah you know fucking that's why you like her yeah that's why <laughs> do they still have the I was going to say the travel agent the tra- <laughs> what do you call tra- <laughs> the travel leader yeah. travel leader yeah. at the end yeah. yeah it's great just somebody going you want to go Turkey yeah <laughs> <laughs> all inclusive <laughs> Hey, star. <laughs> Matt, that would actually throw you off the game more than ever. He's got the end. It's just fucking like Thomas Cook star. Where'd you like to go here? <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> that family come out, Joe, the, the advert. Yeah. Oh, you know, holding the hand. <laughs> Joe, I fucking hate that advert that has a Christmas song. What's it? It, it says something about, is it the holidays or something? That, um, I can't remember what it is, but it fucking infuriates me. It's still on TV, but it's like a they use a full Christmas song, but they've oh. used like a, a different version of it. So it just says, 
Um, I, d- I don't know. I shouldn't have brought holiday up because thing. I, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. Speaking of Adverts, first first you off, have you seen the advert for three, the mobile phone service? No. And it's just this old woman on her phone. And she's an ignorant bastard on her phone all the time. Mm-hmm. So it's just life. Be- and the slogan's like, live your best phone life. But she's just doing stuff she should be doing with her family, but being an ignorant bastard on her phone going, <laughs> oh. And you're like, you're at dinner, put your phone away. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, oh, and your husband's in the fucking rain, get, calling a taxi, and she's going, oh. Has she got a wee flip cover and all? Has she got like her glasses no, down No, but, that's, that, like but that's not realistic, you see. Yeah. She's got one of these. Like She's not like my ma. Hmm. And then he lowers it and there's a disabled guy she busts in the thing. <laughs> but yeah, so, I don't know. It's just yeah. a fucking... It's not worth leaving the house, is it? Nah. But then, I I, I loved COVID. Not having it, but during yeah, it. Yeah, it was a... It was a oh. It was a, I never thought we were going to come out the other side of it. No. I and thought there was just going to be strand after strand for yeah. the rest of our lives. But you know what? I think, like, initially it was like, this is the fucking terrible thing. And then now I'm like... What a load of balls! Like, mm. why is everyone back to full normal again? See, some of the people in that plane just fucking coughing away, mm. stinking bastards. And there's one guy. It was really funny. It was we were in a row on the plane, and it was Catherine was sitting there with two strangers beside her. And of course, I was in the middle of the two kids because fucking super dad. Yeah, but um, it's actually just more space for me. So I was happy enough, but whenever I get off the plane, the people who just stand up straight away. It's like, aye, what are you aye. doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Anyway. Like people that queue up as well mm-hmm. to get on the plane. Yeah. And you're like, there's 250 empty seats here. Yeah. And you're all standing in a big line the whole way down the airport. Yeah. And you're like, allocated seats. You're allocated yeah. your seat. So your seat's there. I what, but I don't get it. Get on last. But and then the plane takes off quicker too. Mm-hmm. So if you get on first, you're all, ho oh, oh, ho, I'm in my seat. Yeah. And then you you just sitting there for about 45 minutes waiting for takeoff. But just people are stupid. Aye. There's a guy got up and he bent down to do something. And he bent down right in front of Catherine and she's like, and she's like, his shock. You just weren't dirty tracks at bottom. She's like, you know, just stale arse sweat. She like, it was rancid. And I was like, you know, see so you go on holiday, wear clean clothes. Yeah. And also not pajamas. Was he your dad? Yes, my dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then those two dicks. My mum and dad had booked their own, like, fancy th- seats up at the front, with all the leg room and all. And they were, like, looking down the flight, going. <laughs> and I was like, right, Holly, where you go? There you go. Let's bring Matilda with you. Help me sit in there and ease it too. Bastards. Uh, did you watch that movie, Society? In the snow of the snow, one, no, one of those ones, but it's about the same alive boys, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. so yeah, well, I'll watch that. But then, that's not a classic thing with with Catherine and picking movies. I thought it's a bit too heavy for me tonight, mm. right, but that's what I want to watch. You know, yeah. put something light on, then by the time it's like, there's no really light. What about this? I'm not in the mood for comedy. I said, like, Tell you what, we'll do stick a love island on. Fuck me, <laughs> there you go. So, I always end up back the same thing, love island. That's when it's important to, to have your own time as well. Yeah. Do you know, obviously, like we both work um, mm-hmm. gigging at night, but I think it's important when the two of us are at home at night to designate different nights where you go, right, I'm going to watch a match. You can do this, you can mm-hmm. do that. Um, and it, it's just so much healthier. But yeah. one thing we started watching, we, we very rarely watch TV together because we can either never settle on watching the same thing mm-hmm. or um, we just don't watch that much TV together. But when we do, we watched um, Catherine Rand's new programme. Oh, why? It started the one, on the, last week. The Family? The Watch Channel or something. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. She's class. Yes, I like her. A yeah, lot. very, very good. I recommend that. It's on the Watch Channel. But all it's like four episodes, but they're mm-hmm. all out. You don't have to wait week by week, so... See, I like that. Like that's we started there. watching the Masters of the Air, but then it's whatever every yeah. week now too. So, a um, couple of questions for you here before we depart. Oh shit! Yeah, let me just get it up. How do you spell Disney? <laughs> Is that one of them? Field, field, straight off the bat. Yeah. Um, Silent P. It does, and you know you mention it, it does look payish, doesn't it? Big time. Uh, oh wow! I got a wee email here about my dentist appointment, and I feel like I need one too. So read it out. Yeah, read it out. Okay, let's see. Um, your routine dental examination is due next month. <laughs> you are now due for your routine dental examination. Please contact the practice or email us to book an appointment. That you're, I'll phone them on the way home in the car. Lot. See, I love the phone people now. Hate Frank sales online. online. <laughs> and I'll and be like, oh. <laughs> but but by the way, seriously, can you you can get me in for, I feel like I've got a wee hole in my tooth, but it's just a wee bit of fillings come out, which is. Uh, McDonald's always helps it. Pardon? And McDonald's. Helps it? Helps. Uh, yeah. I think I'm Paddy McDonald, like he helps. Be nothing. McFlurry. I'd be a wee bit mixed over. that hole, easily. Oh, boy. Oh. So have, you, have you done a wee shout out for questions here? Or do you just on the Patreon. Just the, oh, if you want to ask any questions, do it on Patreon. Patreon. That's it. You don't get to uh, ask them anymore. Slyguy.com forward slash 
Patreon.com slash Slag Out Podcast. What is it? Patreon.com forward slash Slag Out Podcast. podcast. Um, Naomi has said, what's the funniest inconvenient curse you'd put on somebody? Um, Mine would be that every time a certain ex orgasms, he also shits himself. I mean, I don't know if that's how much of a curse. No, so she has said that if she were to put on oh, the right. next, she says I would yeah. do this. Well, every time he, well, I mean, like every time, like I don't think that's it doesn't affect me too much. Mm. You know, every time I orgasm, my shit myself. Mm. Yeah. But usually, what happens is when you come, the shit comes out a wee bit and then goes back in again. You know, like we turtle's head. Yeah, yeah. Like so. you would eat a bag of crisps in primary school and then spit and then suck it back up before it hits the ground. Like, no, no, no. Nope. I, 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 I've always weak watery spit. Unfortunately, yeah. you know. You should try it out. Is that you know the only what? question? No, there's another one after, but you haven't answered this one yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so. um, one thing I would love is every time somebody sneezes, they fart at the same time. I think that'd be great, mm-hmm. just to have sort of a wee double, you know, like yeah. both hands. You know what I would like? You release. For like, I don't know, if it's an X thing, you know, every time they like blink, just they die. They so die. Just the blink yeah, the first blink, they, that's yeah. it. Dead. Drop dead. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know what I would like to happen? <laughs> Any time they masturbate. The uh, tongue has to come out and your eyes have to roll in your head. <laughs> so, <laughs> but then it continues for 10 minutes afterwards when you finish. <laughs> you have to walk out of the room. <laughs> oh, you've been doing nothing? <laughs> I think be a well, lot right, every time they're having sex, they have to shout, this is nowhere near as good as I was with Sean. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a good one, wouldn't it? Yeah. Be, it'd be weird if it was one of mine, you know. Uh, <laughs> what else? Would it be a nice curse? But then even on an, on an X, if someone... You, you know what I like? Um... Ooh, if someone you didn't like every time someone, or what about this for comedians who stroke bits? If they had, if they when they said it, they had to like reference it like you do it in a, like a, a university piece. So if you told someone else's joke, you'd have to be like blah blah blah, blah Frankie Boyle two thousand two. <laughs> you know, that'd be funny. Can't uh, be right. Yeah, that, yeah, that'd be would be good. But yeah, I just think people shit themselves great. Yeah. Um, Dean says, lads, as a couple of physique married guys, physique guys, really? obviously, body guys, yeah, what's the ideal amount of times per month for some filth and romance with your dear wives? Whoa. Uh, also, Sean, I remember you talking in the last podcast with Dave that you'd thought about knocking the stand up in the head at times. Um, this would be a real shame, mate, as you're fantastic. Keep keep going, please don't. Keep killing it. Cheers, Dean. Is that from Joan Haggerty, my man? No? It's, it's from Dean? D- Dean. Dean Haggerty. Thank you. Cheers. Dean. Oh, it's, <laughs> me. <laughs> it's me. It's me. That's right. I'm on your picture. Yeah, Dean Haggerty. The loyalist. The loyalist. <laughs> First to Sean. Just change a letter. Maybe <laughs> 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 it's Don Haggerty, if it's pronounced. Yeah. But so, yeah, I mean. Yeah, that's uh, 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 every year, 10 times a year, I consider quitting stand up. Oh, I thought you were talking about how law often you did. No, no. <laughs> Every year, ten times a year. No, but like, I'm going to answer the question about how often you do it with your wife. Um, enough. Yeah. Just to say enough. But I actively have been, from last year, twice a month. Not enough. To do, try to do, because before it wasn't enough. And try to, yeah, and by the way, mom and dad, if you're listening to this podcast. Never. Still yeah. a virgin. Yeah, still a virgin. But then they do it six times a month. So Your mum and dad? Flat out, yeah. She pegs them and all. Do you think you'll ever get up to six a month? No, never. I don't even no. think they'll get, no. no. Twice a month is a good target. To do me. you think since they came back from Disneyland, they'll do a wee kind of like dress up, a wee, do you know, shove yeah. me like that disabled yeah. French boy? <laughs> yeah. No? No. Well, I mean, shove me like, like him, yeah. I get Titanic, you. draw me like one of your yeah. French girls. Dad'll get a wee flat cap on, pretend to be him. And she'll get, get the ears on, plot in. <laughs> yeah, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like fat Disney lump. Yeah, I know. But yeah, and so yeah, that's Dan Dean. She's a big fan of yours. So yeah, that's great. Thank How you are you Dean. feeling about the stand at the minute? Enjoying it? You're still happy to be doing it again? Or yeah, I mean, it's it's a drug, isn't it? Like mm-hmm. it's it just it just keeps you coming back. And the scene's brilliant, and it's a it's an honor to be involved with everybody who's in the scene. I feel like everybody motivates each other. Everybody helps each other. It, we're all mates. Not everyone. A few sly other. guys out there. Yeah, true, true. true. Got to watch your back sometime. But it's uh, uh-huh. it, it's it's a lovely scene, and it's something that I think if I stepped out of it, I would crave being a part of it. Mm. So I'm kind of just like trying to be more positive and think mm-hmm. positively, and just kind of yeah, just just positive keep going. mindset's where it's at, though, isn't it? That's shit. Where, isn't nah, that's shit. All right, well, that's not a good way to finish it, Sean. This is a lot of fun. 
Yeah, that's been great. Thanks for having me. Listen, any time, it's a pleasure. And do you have anything you want to promote? Anything coming up? Anything on the Um, red? Yeah, as I was talking about our um, production company, excuse me, Diona has written her own um, play on, like, loosely based around IVF and trying to start a family. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a one woman show. It's on in the Lyric Theatre from in April I'm not going to say dates because I'll 100% get it wrong then we have uh, Sex in the City Hall which is doing a two week tour in September before going for a week in the Grand Opera House and then we have our Christmas show which is back in the Grand Opera House in December nice. then I have my joke book out in the summer it's called Let Me Tell You a Joke mm-hmm. I saw that it's the, worldwide. it's been printed and you've had a copy how does it feel yeah. to have like an actual <sighs> copy of your own book Lovely, Fucking class. Like it looked great. It's great, great achievement, though. Yeah, thank you. It's. Uh, I remember reading joke books when I was a child and just being like, imagine writing joke books like this. This is unbelievable. So it's almost. It does feel like it's a. It, it's a, a thing ticked off the box. A wee, a wee dream. Yeah, it's sort of been achieved. But you know what? See, I think that's maybe a problem too. That, that uh, I bet. I, I bet you're a fucking nightmare for, is that taking time to look at what you've done and gone. Fuck well done, Sean. Never do it. It's yeah. only when somebody asks for like a CV or someone goes, I'm drawing up a, a poster here for a gig that you're headlining yeah. or whatever. Can you send me some of your credentials? And then you you go through stuff and you're all, fuck, I forgot I did that. I forgot I yeah. did that. I forgot I did that. But yeah, I think we're we're both the kind of guy that just, you take it off the box and you're, you or off the list and you're just like the next thing. You just yeah. blinker I on. Or sometimes it is nice to look back and just go fucking pat yourself in the back every once in a while because you've, you've done stuff. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. You've achieved. There you go, Sean. As always, a pleasure. See you again. Up a hoot. Soon, like, oh, I mean, see you in about five minutes because it's just going. Yeah. I'm the slack guy.